Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought of course that I would talk about my fight review and my fight analyzation that ended up happening between that of Mr. Canelo Alvarez and Jamel Charlo. Of course, uh, my fight prediction ended up being correct. Of course, a lot of people ended up predicting that Canelo Alvarez, that he would win this fight. I think that that would have been the safe bet. But of course, there was a certain amount of questions around. Uh, I think I even seen Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp talking about it. And Shannon Sharp actually gave Jamel Charlo a 45% chance to win the fight. Now, to be fair, maybe Shannon Sharp, maybe he just doesn't watch boxing uh, <laughs> as much as some other guys. Like I said, I gave Jamel Charlo about a 30% chance at most heading into this fight. Uh, because even though Canelo Alvarez, he has looked to slip down a little bit uh, in his most recent fights. Some would say because it seemed that he lost the motivation a little bit uh, in some of his most recent boxing fights. Some would say that he's just aging and that he's been through a lot of fights. Uh, perhaps maybe a little bit of a mix of both. But Jamel Charlo, in my view, and I've already I've always stated this, Jamel Charlo, he's always been a very good fighter to a borderline great fighter. I don't think that he's ever been an exceptional fighter. Jamel Charlo is very exceptional for his weight class because he's a very good fighter, but I don't think that he's ever going to be a guy that should be ranked number one pound for pound. This is my personal view of it. Um, and that's why Jamel Charlo has never really truly 100% graced my top 10 pound for pound list, at least without, uh, you know... Uh, debate when it came down to it because Jamel Charlo, in my view, uh, he should really have two losses on his record prior to that of the Canelo Alvarez loss because I thought that he lost to Tony Harrison and I also thought that he clearly lost to Brian Gastano. Uh, you know, a lot of people, of course, especially from these LDBC and new media channels, they love to hype up Jamel Charlo and they love to say that he's top five pound for pound and that he's in one of the deepest divisions in boxing. Well, this fight showed that <laughs> the first time that Jamel Charlo really fought that of an all-time great boxer. He didn't just get beat. He got completely whooped within this fight. Or I'm going to say that he at least got completely embarrassed. And once again, I was wondering whether Jamel Charlo was really going to put everything on the line in this fight. Or whether he just pretty much took the paycheck. And I think that the answer is pretty much the latter. Because Jamel Charlo, he looked like he was in the cage with a tiger or a lion. And that he was pretty much just throwing meat at it, <laughs> trying not to get bit or trying not to get eaten. He looked scared to death of Canelo Alvarez in that fight. So pretty much my prediction of him taking the paycheck for this fight, for him to possibly have the excuse of not fighting Terrence Bud Crawford or moving back down to 154, uh, or him to have the excuse of saying, well, I lost to Terrence Bud Crawford because I just lost to Mr. Canelo Alvarez. You know, in my view, that is what I would guess, especially moving up two weight classes out of nowhere because even though Jamel Charlo you know and the Charlo brothers they talk all this talk about wanting to be great and that it'd be a great matchup and all this other stuff from round one I didn't see any urgency I didn't see any tenacity I didn't see any toughness from that of Jamel Charlo it looked like he basically laid down within this fight even Errol Spence Jr. and that of Steve on Fulton you know I even give them a little bit more honor and credit within their fights. And don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on Mr. Jamel Charlo. I'm not stating that I could do what he does or anything like that. Of course, the, you know, the sport of boxing, it's a very tough job. But Jamel Charlo, especially for the alleged pedigree that he was supposed to be at, I never thought that he was at that level. But a certain amount of many people that were trying to put him on that level said that he was. Jamel Charlo could have at least tried to pull out a good four <laughs> rounds in this fight. I think that I scored this fight about 11 rounds to one. Uh, you know, which I said, if Canelo Alvarez is a good version of himself, he is going to win this fight at about 11 rounds to one or nine rounds to three. And that's exactly what ended up happening. I'm pretty sure I scored this fight about 11 rounds to one. If you maybe scored it 10 rounds to two, and that's pretty much the most amount that you could have scored it for Jamel Charlo, two rounds at most, I would maybe understand. But either way, Canelo was very dominant within this fight. Uh, it just is what it is. But Jamel Charlo, once again, to me, at least, it looked like he was pretty much laying down for the paycheck, uh, that he was just trying not to get knocked out within this fight. Uh, that's pretty much overall what I've seen, just my personal view of it. I did not see a great amount of tenacity. I did not see a great, great amount of game planning. Now, once again, when it comes to the pedigree of these two fighters, both of them are A-grade level fighters. But Canelo, at his best, is an S-tier level fighter. He's even a tier above the rest 
above usual A grade level fighters. Jamel Charlo is an A minus level fighter. And to be honest with you, I don't even think that this was a Canelo Alvarez that was an S tier version of himself. And I could be wrong. You know, this is certainly the best, in my view, that he has looked within his past few fights because I don't think that he looked very good against John Ryder. Uh, he looked pretty good against Guy Golovkin in the trilogy, but he did slow down a little bit in those final four to three rounds uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, and of course, against Dimitri Bivo, it was a horrific performance, but you know, it is what it is. But you know, when it comes down to it, I thought Canelo looked very good. I still think that the stamina issue showed a little bit in certain rounds, but maybe, you know, Jamel Charlo was just a little bit tougher, you know, in certain rounds of what Canelo Alvarez thought, and maybe he was just landing certain punches. But Canelo Alvarez, it clearly was shown that the power, uh, that that was a difference. It showed that the skill set was also a major difference. Now, let me also talk about the weight, because, of course, a lot of people are going to ask me, or they may say, well, what do you think about the weight? Do you think that the weight was a major disadvantage for Mr. Jamel Charlo because he did move up, you know, 14 pounds, uh, you know, and it did look like he added on some weight. Like I said, Jamel Charlo is not really a natural 154 pounder. Uh, the big reason why he's also having a lot of success, and a lot of these guys will tell you that he's in the deepest division of boxing and all this other bullshit uh, when it comes down to it. He's fighting these guys that would not beat any other A-grade caliber champions. Tony Harrison, Erickson Lubin, even Brian Gastano, more than likely, they're not going to beat A-plus level champions. They might beat some guys that maybe would be A-minus. They certainly could beat some B-grade level fighters. None of those guys are truly top 10 pound for pound potential guys. The only fighter that Jamel Charlo ever truly fought there that was a great challenge at 154 and in their prime was that of Brian Gastano. And once again, I'm not trying to hate on Jamel Charlo. You know, he's a great fighter. Uh, I think that you could debate him as top 10 pound for pound. But, you know, once again, you had a lot of these guys claiming that, oh, Jamel should be top five pound for pound. And, you know, oh, the reason, you know, like I reviewed a video about Dante's Boxing Nation. And he said that I think that if this was in the same weight class that, you know, it'd be an easy fight for Jamel Charlo. There's no way that you can get outperformed like the way Jamel Charlo did and allege something that if this was in the same weight class, especially because Jamel Charlo, he looked pretty much the damn same size as Canelo Alvarez in this fight. And I know that Canelo Alvarez is known to, you know, balloon up and weight a lot of the times at 185. But I guarantee you that Jamel Charlo looked around, you know, anywhere from 175 to 185 himself. Now, of course, who knows, you know, what that added weight did to him. But I don't think that Jamel Charlo looked tired in this fight. I just think that he looked scared. I think that he looked like a fighter that was pretty much trying to survive and say that he was not going to get knocked out. I think that he felt the power. Uh, and I think that he's seen the defense and the skills. And that was the real reason why Canelo Alvarez ended up winning this fight. Do I think that the weight and that the size was you know a part of it i certainly think that it was a factor uh i certainly think that it was a little bit of a factor but if it was a factor i'm going to give it about a 10 percent factor because jamel charlo once again he could easily be fighting at the middleweight division he's the exact same size as that of janabek in terms of you know girth when it comes down to it you know if he really wanted to get that big at a healthy weight you know he's just as big as some of those other guys at the 160 pound weight division and Canelo Alvarez, once again, I've already told people this, he's not a natural 168 pounder either when it comes down to it. Canelo Alvarez is really more of a middleweight fighter, maybe slightly bigger than that of your average middleweight fighter. Because Canelo Alvarez, when you take a look at him in the ring against true 168 pounders like Caleb Plant, Danny Jacobs, possibly Jamal Charlo, you know, uh, possibly even Golovkin who could have fit there a little bit better than him, you know, or Callum Smith who really is a natural light heavyweight. He's not bigger than any of those guys. Now, Canelo Alvarez, of course, once again, he has girth. He has a little bit of thickness. But Canelo Alvarez, once again, is a dude that is about five foot eight when it comes down it with a 71 and a half inch arm reach. And he's really no bigger than that of a middleweight fighter. And that's why, in my view, that, you know, the, you know, complete excuse of saying that, oh, well, the reason why Canelo Alvarez dominated this so easily was just because of the weight. No, it wasn't because of the weight, really, and I'm not saying that it wasn't a factor, but to say that it was the main factor, I don't think that I can allege that, because the way that the skill set was so different, I mean, it was just absolutely worlds apart, and that's the reason why Canelo Alvarez won, and that's why I alleged in my fight prediction that if this fight were to go down, and if Canelo is truly at his best form, or anywhere near close to it, 
that this fight was not going to be anywhere near competitive. Because if you take a look at both of these fighters and know what you're truly talking about, the defense is not even close. The counterpunching ability is not even close. The movement, head movement, is not even close. The boxing IQ is not even close. The level of power is not even close. None of those categories are close. And when you talk about beating a fighter on that level, you have to have some sort of categories to even up with them. You know, it just is what it is. And Charlo, you know, once again, I think that he's a very good fighter to a borderline great fighter. I don't think that he's ever been an exceptional fighter. I don't think that either Charlo brother, to be quite honest with you, just in my personal view, I don't think that either of them have really been exceptional fighters. I think that Jamel Charlo has had the advantage of fighting at 154, being bigger than a lot of these guys, lengthier, you know, more powerful, and on top of that, clearly more skilled. I just don't think that a lot of the guys at 154 are truly on his level. You know, it just is what it is. I would like to see Jamel Charlo in the ring, not only with Terrence Bud Crawford, but possibly Janabek or Janabek, whoever that fighter is, maybe a couple of other fighters, maybe even Jaime Mungia, you know, certain other fighters like that, certain fighters that can handle his level of size and also have a little bit of talent. And I'm not saying that he hasn't fought fighters that have not had talent. Tony Harrison had a little bit of talent, but let's also be real. He, he, he folds up like a lawn chair every single time in one of his big fights. He has no mental fortitude. It just is what it is. And he has a chin made out of wet tissue paper. And Brian Gastano, he's a very good fighter, but you know, he's about, you know, I don't know how tall he is, but he looks about five foot six to five foot seven. He looks like a guy that could easily fight at the welterweight division. And on top of that, he has flaws of himself. At most, you know, he's an A minus fighter. And, you know, Jamal Chala beat him. I gave him a lot of credit. He's accomplished some great things in his career. But that's why I never bought this saying that you know, oh, Jamel Charlo, he had one of the strongest ones at Undisputed. I never personally believed that because I don't think that any of the fighters that he beat to get Undisputed, besides Brian Gastano, I don't think any of them were truly 100% A-plus fighters. To be honest with you, it's a true debate other than Brian Gastano, and even with Brian Gastano, that he fought any A-grade fighters there. It just is what it is. You know, Brian Gastano, I think, is probably an A-grade level fighter. I give him credit to that. But the fights that I would really love to see Jamel Charlo win is Terrence Crawford, Gianna Beck. I would love to see him against Jaime Munguia. Uh, I would love to see him possibly against Carlos Adams. I would like to see him against any one of those fighters. Those are the fights that I would truly love to see with Jamel Charlo. Because it's no offense once again, but I'm not super duper impressed by you fighting guys that could probably lose to a lot of other guys when it comes down to it. Because all the guys that Jamel Charlo ended up beating within that weight division to become undisputed... Tim Zhu could, in my view, and I don't think that Tim Zhu is necessarily an A-plus level skilled fighter, but Tim Zhu could pretty much become undisputed in that weight division, other than that of the exception of the undefeated Brian Gastano. That's just my personal view of it. So once again, you know, and I like to say that because I'm not trying to discredit Jamil Trello necessarily. I think that he is a great fighter, but that's just the way that I see it. I don't think that Jamil Trello has ever, ever before this fight fought a fighter Anywhere near on the level of Canelo Alvarez. Not even close. Not even close. And that's a big part of the reason why I like to review these Dante's Boxing Nations or the Boxing Eagle videos or some of these guys that clearly are trying to tear down Canelo Alvarez and to try and revise history to make sure that, you know, he allegedly isn't this great fighter, you know, because, oh, he's never dominant in any of the biggest fights of his career. You know, like, like one of the narratives that he loved to say is that, Oh, well, Canelo Alvarez has never been dominant in any of the big fights of his career or they've ended up in controversy. So we really can't call him the best fighter in the world or a great fighter. You know, we can't really call him that. Yet these standards are never set that way for that of a Jamel Charlo, who had a very controversial draw against that of Brian Gastano, lost to Tony Harrison, who is a guy that lost every big fight by knockout previously before he beat Jamel Charlo in that first fight. You know, they're not, they're not set the same standards to Andre Ward, you know, when a lot of people thought that he lost to Sergey Kovalev, even though I thought Ward probably won that fight just by a little bit, or that it could have went either way. Uh, but, you know, when it comes down to it, like I said, uh, you know, the standards are never set the same. You know, it's very particularly interesting. You know, or when they say that, oh, Jamal Charlotte moved up two weight classes, right? But then when Lomachenko moved up a weight class to 135, they tried to say, oh, well, that's his natural weight class even though damn well knowing that he's a natural 130-pounder. The thing is, is that you have to take things in the context, and you also have to know what you're talking about. Jamel Charlo, anyone can see if you know shit about boxing, 
that he's bigger than the majority of the 154 pounders there. He could easily, easily fight at 160 pounds when it comes down to it. And that's why I've just never been super impressed with his undisputed run. Because he's a guy that is fighting, first of all, in a division that I never thought was that super strong in the first place when he got there. Once Canelo and Lara and Andre and Jamal Charlo and a lot of those other fighters ended up leaving that weight division. It's no offense, but Jamal Charlo pretty much took that weight division over once none of those guys, when it came down to it, once none of those guys were there. All those guys that I just mentioned, those were the, those were the true A grade level fighters of the 154 pound weight division. Jamal Charlo pretty much took over after, you know, no prominent fighter was there. It just is what it is, you know. So like I said, you know, we'll see where Jamal Charlo goes from there. Uh, but like I said, there is levels to the game. And Canelo Alvarez showed that he was just superior in every way. I do think that the weight, once again, probably had a little bit of a factor. Do I think that it had as much of a factor, you know, as what many people try to say that it did? No, because as you can see, Jamal Charlo was very comparable in size to Canelo Alvarez. And on top of that, he had the height and the reach. <laughs> so like I said, it has never made any sense to me to call Jamel Charlo a top five pound for pound fighter. Because if Guillermo Rigondeau can beat Nonito Donaire the way that he did. Now, of course, Donaire is not even close to the, level, to the level of fighter that Canelo Alvarez is. But even if you want to make that type of comparison, if Guillermo Rigondeau can beat Nonito Donaire the way that he did, or at least make it a very tough fight, if Lomachenko can at least make both the Lopez and the Haney fight both very tough fights, when it comes down to it, or, you know, certain other fighters that might move up at least a little bit, and they can make it possibly, you know, potentially more dangerous fights. When you not only have the height and the reach advantage, but more than likely, at least somewhat a comparable weight, <laughs> the most amount of rounds that you can win at maximum was two rounds. Like, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. But like I said, congratulations to Canelo, and I wish Jamel Charlo well. I know that a lot of people, they're going to take a look at this video, and that they're going to say that I'm hating on Jamel Charlo, and I understand the perspective. But at the end of the day, I've been saying this about Jamel Charlo for years, and that's why I've also stated that on my top 10 pound-for-pound pound list, he never 100% personally graced my top 10 pound-for-pound pound list, at least without that of a debate, because you had other fighters on there. He's never really been within my top five. I don't even think that that's been debatable, because uh, you've always had fighters like Crawford and Canelo and Spence and Tyson Fury and Usyk that have been right there. And now you have in a way. And then you had other fighters like Josh Taylor, Demetri Bevo, Artu Bidabib, Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, possibly Javante Tank Davis. You can have a serious debate that all those fighters are above Jamel Charlo. You know, it just is what it is. Uh, you know, but anyways, that's pretty much about it for this video. I thought that it was a very good performance by that of Mr. Canelo Alvarez. Now, that being said, when it comes down to what do I think is next for Mr. Canelo Alvarez? Because that's probably the only thing that I haven't really talked about quite as of yet. What do I think is next for him? Well, Canelo, of course, said that he's going to return on that of Cinco de Mayo. Who do I believe more than likely that he's going to try to get in the ring with? I think more than likely that it's going to be that of Jamal Charlo. And I think that Canelo Alvarez, in my personal view, I think that he would be smart to get in the ring with Jamal Charlo. You know, or that possibly of Demetrius Andre. But Andre, of course, is fighting David Benavidez next. I think that he's going to save the winner of the Andre and David Benavidez fight for that of last, and in my personal view, Canelo Alvarez would be very smart to do that, because both the Charlo brothers are going to be names that you're going to want on your resume when people take a look at your resume 20 years later on down the line. The LDBC and New Media can say all this shit uh, when it comes down to it about, oh, you know, they hadn't fought for a while and all this other shit, you know, but once again, Canelo Alvarez has a hand surgery or he hasn't fought for a while and he has to get in the ring with Bivol and, and all these other fighters, you know, so once again, I don't mind you saying that, but then Let's keep the same standards. And I get it, but at the end of the day, it's kind of Jamal Charlo's fault why his career has ended up the way that it is. And isn't it very interesting that with Ryan Garcia, that Ryan Garcia, when he pulled out of the Javante Tank Davis fight, and I did agree with people saying this, that when he backed out of the Javante Tank Davis fight, that people said that he's using depression and his mental health as a quote-unquote excuse. And these LDBC and new media guys they raked Ryan Garcia's name over the coals. But isn't it very interesting that when it comes down to when it came to Jamal Charlo pulling out of the Canelo Alvarez fight, and Jamal Charlo had to step up and be the one to fight Canelo Alvarez because of mental issues and all this other stuff that he wasn't quote-unquote making an excuse. And that, oh, that's the reason why he didn't look like the same fighter. So once again, 
Very interesting what standards they like to apply. And that's why I always say new media is, is not, uh, you know, any honest, objective, you know, narrative. All, all they are is that of the pro-black cult version of old media. That's all they are. All right. That's all they are. So it is what it is. But anyways, that's pretty much about it. As for Canelo, I do think that he is going to go after Mr. Jamal Charlo next. I think that that would be the smart decision because both the Charlo brothers have been challenging him for a very long time. You know, at least, you know, uh, <laughs> in certain circumstances. But when it comes down to it, you know, you're going to want both of those guys on your names, you know, on, on your resume, because, you know, a lot of people are going to be talking about those guys later on down the line. And Canelo Alvarez could have an opportunity to shut up both Charlo brothers and a certain amount of the fans out there that, you know, tried to, uh, you know, say that, oh, well, Canelo, uh, you know, you need to fight that of the Charlo brothers. It would be a great victory. Of course, if he also fought that, a uh, Mr. Jamal Charlo, who in my view is the more talented, the bigger, and the better brother of the two. So it would be a very interesting fight, you know, uh, when it comes down to it. And then on top of that, I think that he's probably going to save the winner of David Benavidez and Demetrius Andre, probably for last, if I had to guess. If I had to guess, more than likely. But we'll see. You never know. He could fight the winner of David Benavidez and Andre next. Uh, you know, I don't know if Canelo's really going to last four or five more years. Canelo says that he wants to box four or five more years. I think more than likely that he probably does want to box four or five more years. But I think that more than likely his body is going to wear him down. And Canelo, you know, he still looked very good in this fight. In the last fight against John Ryder, he looked about 70% of what he was. In this fight, he looked probably about 85% of what he was. I think that he looks great. I'm not going to say that he looked as exceptional as what I've ever seen him. Just in my personal view. Just, just in my view. But, you know, maybe that possibly is because Jamel Charlo did not pull out, you know, everything that Canelo Alvarez, you know, possibly could have pulled out because maybe Canelo Alvarez just didn't feel the need to because he did dominate this fight relatively easy. So, you know, it is what it is. But anyways, we'll see what ends up happening next with both of these fighters. Uh, good on Canelo Alvarez, of course, for getting that of a dominant victory. Uh, good on Jamel Charlo, of course, for surviving. But to be quite honest with you, I thought that it was not a very good performance. I thought that it was a very lackluster performance. Uh, I thought that it was very clear that he was intimidated of Canelo Alvarez. And in my personal view, uh, it didn't look like he was coming to win that fight at all. Just in my personal view. But, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, good on that of Mr. Canelo Alvarez for winning the fight. The fight pretty much did go down as I expected it. Uh, and we'll see what ends up happening next to both of these fighters. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.